What's up everybody, I'm back with my first video of the new season and today I want to talk about the new grenade launcher dropping from Trials, the Cataphract GL3. Before we begin though, if you like this video or what I do, feel free to follow my Twitch, there's a link down below as always. Like the video, subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you as always for watching, let's go ahead and get started. The Cataphract GL3 is a new strand heavy grenade launcher with a fire rate of 120 RPM. It is only dropping in Trials of Osiris, and it is the first heavy grenade launcher available with bait and switch, which is typically considered to be one of the best damage perks in the game. Also important to note that right before Lightfall, grenade launchers did have a huge amount of hype behind them due to a buff they were set to receive, but they didn't end up really becoming that strong in the meta. The main problem that grenade launchers have is that while they do have very good damage per second in short windows, they struggle to keep up in total damage output compared to other viable heavy weapon types. Rockets just do similar DPS to grenade launchers while also having more total damage in reserve. And then against bosses with longer phases and easy crits, you could also use linears, which would also do better than grenade launchers here, and sometimes even better than rockets depending on the linear and the boss that you're talking about. That just kind of leaves grenade launchers behind, where they're pretty decent at burst and bad in longer phases, while rockets are pretty strong both in short bursts and longer phases. Cataphract, however, has some of the best sets of perks of any grenade launcher in the game, even better perks than I would say for Windigo, so how does its damage stack up? Well, here's the rolls that I did testing with, and I did get the best results out of this roll here, with Envious Assassin and Bait and Switch. Auto-loading with bait and switch is also not bad, but it will perform very similarly to any other grenade launcher in an auto-loading rotation with something like an Izanagi's Burden, just with a bit more damage since bait and switch is stronger than something like Explosive Light. Envious Assassin, on the other hand, is actually pretty unique here because of the sheerly massive magazine size you can get. The mine specifically does not have spike grenades, but I was able to get the same exact blast radius stat on one of my Windigo GLs with spike grenades, so its values for bait and switch were calculated using that, since on heavy GLs, spike can give a total damage increase varying between 15% and 7.5%, depending on your blast radius stat, and the lower the blast radius is, the higher that damage bonus is, but if you have two GLs with the same blast radius, then spikes will be consistent as far as a bonus across each. And from my testing, spike grenades on a 120 RPM GL with a blast radius of 55 was hitting for a total of 12,683 damage on impact and 31,775 damage on the explosion, totaling 44,458 damage per grenade. Bait and switch's 35% damage buff would increase this to 60,018, and without spike grenades and with the same exact blast radius of 55, your grenades were doing 8,302 on impact and 31,919 on explosion for a total of 40,224 per grenade, buffed to 54,298 by bait and switch. This is just shy of a 10% difference in damage per shot. Ideally, all but your first shots are going to have bait and switch, so that should mean that spikes are going to hit for a total damage per reserve of 1,004,746, and many frags, the second one I tested here with a magazine of 7 instead of 6, should be able to get a total damage of 908,989, which is still around 100k less, so right around that 10% mark. However, the main difference I found by using mini frags was that its mag size buff would let you fire all 17 shots without reloading, while spike grenades not buffing the magazine size means that with Envious Assassin at max stacks, it'll max out at 15 shots and will require a reload for the last two, and that reload will reduce your damage per second. If we were to ignore the reload on the spike roll, however, and just fire 15 shots and holster without firing our last two, then our total damage is going to hit 884,710 within 7.5 seconds, or 117,961 DPS. The mini frags roll, though, can fire 17 shots in 8.5 seconds, totaling 908,989 damage and a result of 106,939 damage per second, so it's still a little bit less here, still around that slightly under 10% difference. Although in this no reloads case, mini frags does do a little more total damage since you get those two extra shots, but it is only around 3%, which I don't think is necessarily worth the 10% difference in DPS. So on the whole, I think this GL, like most others, is one where spike is just better than the other options. Although there is a more extreme example where mini frags is technically a little better, and that example is going to be if you were to rally with reserve mods for extra ammo at the start, since you'd have 19 shots in reserve instead of just 17, and that would theoretically bump mini frags DPS up above spikes, since you do still get to avoid a reload. But the main question then is, does spike grenades get to use its better total damage to beat mini frags? And 
The results are a little interesting. So our 120 RPM GL fires at a rate of 2 shots per second, and 19 shots can therefore be fired in 9.5 seconds, which is entirely within Bait and Switch's window for our mini frags roll, which can load all 19 at once with the Envious Assassin. Our spike grenades roll, however, will still have to reload after 15 shots, meaning that at least one shot is going to have to lose its bait and switch if you decide to reactivate after the reload. Reactivating bait and switch means you'll lose about another second on your DPS window, and if you decide not to reactivate bait and switch, you'll be missing out on the 35% damage buff. Out of these two options, you are better off reactivating bait and switch for those last four shots, which only means one grenade, the one used to reactivate bait and switch, will not have the 35% damage buff. So in this scenario, the mini frags roll actually gets a total of 1,017,585 damage within 9.5 seconds, which is a DPS of 107,114. Our spike grenades roll has a reload time of 3.13 seconds, meaning it fires 19 shots in 12.63 seconds, and there, assuming again that you reactivate bait and switch, you're going to need about another second for your other two weapon swaps, which brings you to about 13.63 seconds. Your total would be 1,109,222, but your DPS then would be cut to 81,380. And again, this situation is not super likely to really happen, and therefore not really likely to make mini frags better than spikes, but some people do always like to rally with reserves, so technically it would make that first damage rotation better. Up to you if you think it's worth it to have two rolls from trials and then switch them in. But personally, I think it is just better to go with spike grenades, although mini frags is not awful if that is the best one that you can get. I know trials can be a real pain to grind, so if that's the best you can get, you know, not going to be terrible. Still probably going to do more than something like a Wendigo. Although, I think the better comparison for Cataphract here is to check it compared to a Reconstruction slash Bait and Switch Apex Predator. You could also check it against a Cold Comfort, however my Apex Predator is the one that I have with Bait and Switch, my Cold Comfort does not. So the Apex Predator with Galahorn was able to empty all of its rockets in about 10.53 seconds, dealing 1,127,613 total damage for a DPS value of 107,392, so you do get more total damage, and virtually the same DPS but you also get a better value on ammo pickups than either grenade launcher here, since even the lower value ammo finder bricks will allow you to get one rocket every time, and you can carry seven rockets max without reserves. Keep in mind, this season running double special to get more heavy drops got nerfed pretty severely, so the value on ammo pickups is more important now. So no, I don't think that Cataphract is going to beat out Apex Predator here, even though it is somewhat close. Apex or even Cold Comfort are just too good on too many fronts, especially with bait and switch on those as well, and grenade launchers as a whole weapon type do still struggle with damage output compared to rockets or even linear fusions, depending on the boss. The DPS on other rolls of the Cataphract, do keep in mind, will be even lower than the two in this video, since they will have to reload more frequently. Things like Field Prep or even Auto Loading Holster are going to have to actually manually reload, and those DPS values are going to be even lower than Envious Assassin was here. So if another buff comes for grenade launchers, including Cataphract GL3, then yeah, I can see it being a bit more valuable with something like this Envious Assassin bait and switch roll. But currently, I just think it's not quite able to hang with rocket launchers or linear fusions at the end of the day for almost any boss in the game, but it could definitely be worse. But if you're not a big fan of Trials, I would skip this one for the time being. Although, that is all I have for y'all this time around, so if there's anything else you'd like to see from me, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, I will be streaming a lot more this week at my Twitch down below as well. The next video I'm going to have is going to be some raid builds before the contest mode raid this week, so if you're interested in that, hit that subscribe and the notification so you can see when that goes up. Later, everybody. I'll catch you in the next one.